So today, Bernardian will be uh, presenting. He has a PhD in history from UCAM. Um, he taught at Lionel Crew, UCAM in University of Montreal. He was uh, an education advisor, the notable, and professor at uh, the Department of uh, Pedagogy and Andragogy of the University of Montreal and uh, a director of the CCMD. He published several uh, books and publications on uh, student success and also two novels. Uh, Ms. Vallet teaches uh, psychology in Terbonne since 2007. She is also in charge of uh, uh, classes at Telug and uh, the Performa um, program at the Sherbrooke University. She uh, has a master's in education, a master's in mental health, a BA in psychology, and a third uh, a graduate diploma. And she uh, concentrates on well being of the students and pedagogy in superior or higher education. Nancy Pinot teaches. Um, Specialized education at the Sujab de Rizum Mouski since 2013. Her uh, teaching experience has allowed us to develop a variety of skills. She has uh, taught different classes in psychology, uh, children education, and continuous education, as well as uh, specialized education techniques. Uh, she is interested in working methodology, and this comes from her experience throughout the years, and uh, she will share her experience and her discoveries with you uh, with great pleasure today. Have a great webinar. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to welcome you here at this webinar. I hope that everybody will find something useful in it. I would like to thank, first of all, uh, the Association Québécoise de Pédagogie Collégiale for their invitation. And also, I want to thank Nicole Perrault, who unfortunately cannot be here with us today, for her support uh, throughout this process for managing this uh, webinar and also for her great patients, she'll know what I'm talking about. So this is what we'll speak about today. So we have an agenda that I will be sharing on the screen now. There you go. So a presentation outline. We will start um, by talking about the student profession and intellectual work methodology. Uh, the um, student profession and the transition from high school to college and then student needs in 2023. So we'll talk about L'Essentiel pour réussir ses études, the book itself, printed book and companion digital material. Then we'll talk about um, skills in technical pro programs. So intellectual work methodology skills and technical programs uh, that might surprise some of you because we don't talk about it much in technical programs or requirements for intellectual work methodology. Um, but we will be able to uh, speak about it and then um, identify some common skills that are found in all five technical sectors in college education. Then we'll talk about winning practices for integrating uh, IWM into a technical program. So we'll emphasize uh, the process uh, looking at um, uh, the specific case of uh, specialized education. Um, that case will be presented by Nancy and we'll give an example, um, examples based on her experience there. So. Um, the student profession, you know, I asked myself, uh, to start with, I was telling myself, you know, it's not really a profession being a student, but it is a complex um, process, a complex affiliation process and to implicit social codes. And uh, I'm citing now Alain Coulon, um, who developed this idea in 1997, and he republished it in um, 2005, uh, when he's speaking about a, a three-stage uh, process. So, of course, there's this transition from high school to um, college. He calls it a first shock, so the test of strangeness, right? Um, these are completely new practices that uh, the students are experiencing when they go to college. Uh, the relationship with the teachers, for example, is completely different when you are at college and when you are at high school. Uh, there is a different type of bond that needs to set with the teacher. The teacher can be a lot more, let's say, impressive. He may be a person who leads research, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, there is an adaptation phase also, a process uh, 
um, in which the student learns characteristics uh, who he goes from being uh, a novice to being an apprentice, right? So um, he learns the implicit rules and codes of academic language. For example, doing documentary research uh, doesn't mean that you just cut and paste from Google and then say, I did a research. That is not the way that you apply the term research in the college setting. You have a more complex understanding of what research means there. And all of this rests on an affiliation phase, so a relative mastery of the rules of higher education, where um, the student uh, builds his uh, intellectual status, uh, his intellectual affiliation, he'll say, I want to become a technologist, an engineer, a nurse, a manager, an artist, etc., etc. So this rests on five great uh, or five main skills that the student needs to master. The first one is to get organized. So um, time management, stress management, work planning, setting up properly. Um, this has to be taught. This has to be taught to the students. You need to um, get the student to share uh, in these practices. Some students come into college already very well organized, but you, know, you have to make it so that the students are able to manage the fact that they might have seven to eight classes um, he's going to have at least um, 15 important exams, tests that he's going to have to succeed in during his first semester, et cetera, et cetera. He also needs to get the most out of his classes and readings, right? So he needs to attend class, take notes, read actively, study and pass exams. It is not that obvious. He needs to um, also learn how to work uh, in a network, you know, work uh, as a team. These are the soft skills, right? Um, so mastering digital tools and uh, netiquette, uh, teamwork skills, he needs to uh, learn to find and process information as well. So plan, use the right methods, use library and internet resources, evaluate and process information. So not just absorb and then give the information back, but actually interpret it, process it and say, um, you know, actually participate in this information and then uh, present it adequately by presenting um, good text, you know, writing good text, citing sources, compiling a bibliography, giving oral presentations, using um, technological tools, etc. So I was very impressed by uh, the um, ICAP team at the Cégep de Rimouski that's been analyzing student needs for several years now. And uh, so at an academic level and a personal level. So the percentage here that you see, I took a few needs that were expressed by the students. So these needs might be intense, these might be moderate, or these, uh, they might be um, less intense. So it's uh, two thirds of students that say that they're going to need help to prepare exams once they get to the college level. So they're in, they're interrogated or when they're in high school. And then we um, ask the same questions again once they're in college, so in their first year of college. So developing work methods, work methodology, close to two thirds of the students say that they're going to need require help with that speaking up in class, also then paying attention, concentrating, etc. So you can see the statistics there. And also uh, working in teams at the end and using uh, library resources, it's close to 45% of the students that say that they're going to need help to use library resources adequately. So that's where we see that there is a clear consciousness on the student's part regarding their needs um, and the help that they're going to require in order to succeed in their semesters. And no one will be surprised to uh, see that stress management is a concern for close to two thirds of the students. Also motivating um, oneself to study uh, is another challenge. Uh, managing a schedule, um, We, we need to recognize, acknowledge that uh, they are conscious of what's happening to them. They know that uh, they uh, will need to solve problems uh, in relation to their poor lifestyle habits. So, 
So now regarding um, the student professor, we speak first of all of uh, motivation. So here we can cite uh, Denise Barbeau, Catherine Belek. Um, motivation is a decisive factor to succeed in one's studies. Why uh, take four classes um, in philosophy, two uh, French classes, mathematics, et cetera, et cetera? Why be this discipline if you're not motivated, right? It's impossible if you're not motivated. Managing your time is essential. Um, planning your semester is a significant effort when you look at all the classes that you need to go to in one semester and uh, the assignments uh, that you need to hand in, um, labs, uh, uh, internships that need to be completed for only one semester while you only have, uh, say, 42 hours of, already have 42 hours of work to be done at in class and at home, and then you need to actually work uh, to make a living, and then you need to spe spend time to take care of yourself as well. So that's already a lot of uh, time spent in a week. And regarding stress management and anxiety, there is a whole chapter developed on that. So students need to recognize that they are experiencing stress and anxiety, taking notes and in taking notes in class and remotely, that is something that we added, um, the remotely part uh, since the pandemic, it is absolutely essential. Also active reading. Um, there are tricks that uh, can help someone make reading a less passive activity. Um, studying and passing exams, memory is something that we talk about here and teamwork and networking, this is a must. There is a whole chapter that we'll be talking about that. So, um, Working in a team is something that can be taught and it is something that can be learned. It is not just about saying, you know, just do teamwork, work as a team. No, it is a more complex process and there are skills tied to that. So research and um, information processing um, are significant uh, topics treated in this chapter, part two. Um, so it's not necessarily uh, scientific research with a work hypothesis and very specific uh, tools or research tools. We leave that to other um, segments of the programs, but uh, researching and processing information, it is, is something that's really developed in this chapter and also writing good texts. So um, here we're talking about a, a text of a high intellectual level, right? Uh, for me, just summarizing a text is something very difficult, it is complex, and it requires good abilities. Um, so, a dissertation in philosophy um, and in French and uh, research reports um, are different types of texts that are touched on here. Um, and so we try to touch on um, most of the fundamental types of texts that are asked of the students. Um, now in the th part three, um, we talk about presentation st standards, and this has to do with uh, student integrity, of course. Uh, so we cover a uh, citation, um, citing your sources, that is very important. This becomes more and more relevant with ChatGPT, et cetera. Um, and for bibliographies and citation styles, uh, we speak about uh, two uh, styles, the APA and um, the traditional Zion style. So author title style, that's also, um, presented on Mondiapazon. For students, there's uh, hundreds of cases that are presented there on how to do a footnote, how to do a um, bibliography. Um, and uh, regarding oral presentations, uh, we know that that is an activity that really scares students. Um, there's 75% of uh, general population that finds that having to present ideas in front of a group is uh, something terrifying. So we teach students how to um, give an oral presentation using PowerPoints uh, tools. Um, now, uh, the 
book offers reminders regarding traditional citation styles, um, Dion and the APA, and uh, content map at the beginning of each chapter's sections on Zoom and uh, tactic, practical advice, and uh, 32 tables, 51 figures, illustrations, bibliography, and index. Um, we added um, sections about uh, the mechanisms of performance anxiety, uh, the plagiarism, we have some case studies for that. We touch on chat GPT, so tarot and intellectual integrity. And uh, we talk about fake news, pseudoscience, filter bubbles, and eco chambers. So this is all we can see in the written material. Now I would like um, Catherine to present uh, the digital material included in the Essentials for Successful Studies. Yes, indeed, I will present the um, digital material to you. So um, you can access this through the E plus uh, platform. So the point here is to have concrete tools so that teachers can uh, deploy um, tools for their students and uh, teach intellectual methodology, uh, intellectual work methodology to their students in class. So we'll go to um, presentation documents. Here we have the tables and figures uh, from the manual that are available online as well. And this is a new, in the second ed edition, there's seven PowerPoint presentations. Uh, these are topic oriented. So the first one um, covers success. So motivation, we present there uh, the class that we're teaching, the uh, motivation and success factors. And then second, uh, third, fourth, and sixth, a PowerPoint presentations, uh, or the second PowerPoint presentation touches on uh, points two, items two, three, four, and six, uh, student task planning. And then we have a presentation on reading and comprehension, um, another on teamwork, searching for information, copyright, and oral communication. So in this case, uh, we grouped uh, writing, citing sources, and presenting your report, and then a presentation on so the, the point of the PowerPoint presentations is uh, to give a visual support to teachers who would like to teach um, intellectual work methodology in their classes. So uh, we also included five reading tests. Uh, these are available for the students. We have one for each of the 12 chapters of uh, the handbook. And we also have three that are um, thematic. So um, sometimes these uh, really touch on on topics that that are that are important for students the quality of their sources research strategies and intellectual integrity and um, also the reading tests are always available in two options so there is the assessment mode and there is the learning mode the learning mode or the assessment mode um is can provide a result, you know, you can get a grade from it. And then there's also learning mode. So for example, the student may receive instead of a grade, an explanation on their answer. So why their answer was good or wasn't good and, and they receive feedback. Um, so we um, improved uh, educational activities. There are now 18. These are exercises. These are workshops that can be done in class with the participation of the students. So there are always instructions for the teacher how they can use it in class. And there's always um, instructions for the students. So we have uh, um, grids, answer grids uh, that could just be printed out by the teacher for the student to fill them in after. There are correction grids for the teacher as, and uh, eight activities include uh, descriptive skills for correction. So there is a uh, correction criteria. Um, it can be summative or inaudible. This is all available in Word format, modifiable. So you can um, take out some criteria, take out some um, parts of the grids. This is all meant to just provide tools to you and you can adapt it, that, uh, adapt them afterwards. So um, you need to be able to, this is to teach you to uh, write an outline. Um, 
research uh, keywords, research topics. So you can always uh, use texts that are uh, specific to your field. Uh, students will uh, learn how to do quotations, citation styles, etc. cetera, uh, summarize texts, uh, work as a team, etc. cetera. Um, following that, there are self-assessment questionnaires just to allow students to um, position themselves in, in terms of anxiety, stress, and motivation. We also have a list of hyperlinks. Uh, we have more than 200. So uh, this was divided up uh, per chapter. So if you want to integrate some topics, you'll be able to go and uh, find hyperlinks for each chapter. And in each chapter, there's three sections. So it can be either um, to consult, to view, or to experiment. So for consultation, it's more websites, texts, etc. And then after that, the viewing ones is more um, short videos, demo videos for tools that can be used by students and then experimentation. Um, well, these are interactive training uh, modules where students can test things out to develop their work methodology. We have eight tutorials for presenting a report in Word. So this is really just to show uh, to students what the steps are for presenting a report. And those eight tutorials are um, available for PC and Mac. So there is a lot of material here available. And the objective is to uh, give you as much as possible and that you have as little as possible to prepare yourself, right? You can just adapt the material. It's, it's turnkey material that you can just take and adapt to your um, classroom setting. Um, now, I'll tell you basically where uh, inter intellectual work methodology is found at the co college level. So the goals of college training include several items of um, IWM, so social skills, rigor, perseverance, analytical skills, synthesis, research skills, etc. Same thing for skills that are found in all college, college programs, right? So autonomy, organization, commitment, adaptability, social and communication skills, teamwork, information, technology. So this is part of all um, college programs and also specific training, ability to learn, acquisition of work methodology. So here we see um, that these are objectives uh, that are part of college programs, all college programs. So. Regarding the technical sector, we asked ourselves, how can we really highlight the presence of IWMs in technical programs? So we did an exhaustive, um, well, we did a, a small analysis. This is a, an analysis that should be more comprehensive, but we targeted the programs or there were the most um, admission requests. So the five that had the most admission requests, and then there we analyzed the ministry requirements. Um, so we looked at all of the skill statements for these programs, and we identified what the IWMs were in each of these lists of skills, um, skill lists for technical programs. So. Uh, the ones that we find there are working in a team, oral communication, managing your time, managing stress, carrying out documentary research, uh, producing different types of reports, and using um, IWM. Um, so um, now, no, ICT. Um, and now regarding multimedia and the nursing sciences, you know, this is very dense, but it's just to tell you what, it's just to show you what the results are for a small analysis of a, a ministry requirement, a skill requirement uh, list. So here you have uh, the category in which the IWM is found, and then you have the text, uh, the way that this objective is uh, phrased in the list uh, provided by the ministry so um 
So working in a team, where do we find that requirement on the ministry's part? It is found in uh, the program goal. So we also have, uh, um, we also find that in skills. So one skill is uh, phrased as follows, communicating with other team members. Um, and then uh, you can see what classes, what courses each uh, element is found in. So you can see every place where you can work on uh, IWMs. Uh, and regarding stress and time management, uh, of course, uh, deadlines and uh, task planning, um, and there uh, are performance criteria that relate to appropriate use of stress management methods. And also we have a category uh, that has to do with research, writing, and ICT. So um here of course uh, the skill in our role for the interpreter so this gives you a global idea of how you can integrate iwm um in your programs now if i go quickly uh, for nursing uh, care uh, first of all there is an educational um, aim on the program's part to develop the ability to communicate and interact with individuals, work teams, and other stakeholders. So there we really find communication and teamwork. And there are also two skills that uh, target communication and collaboration. And we also have some skill or performance criteria and that uh, reiterate these elements. So we have uh, elements of skills that can be found in different uh, courses, uh, managing time and stress and research, writing and ICT. We have uh, several contexts of achievements and also um, elements of skills and performance criteria. So I'm not gonna go into detail for all of this, but you, you'll receive all of these uh, slides. If it interests you, you'll be able to go look at the descriptions the ministry descriptions for your technical programs as well in order to to find elements of IWM there. And um, so this is it for um, IWM in uh, technical programs. And then I'll let Nancy speak about how um, concretely we can integrate IWMs in our classes. If you want to um, add anything as I proceed also, um, Catherine, you, you can just tell me your comments are welcome. And so uh, regarding IWM, integration we have a program approach uh, so when there are overhauls program overhauls or program creations um we can identify needs on the part of the students or the teachers and uh, we can establish ways to collaborate collaborate between all players. And we realized that specialized education students, for example, had different challenges, different needs regarding their working methodology. And when we uh, revised the programs in this new version, we had a whole reflection regarding how we could introduce uh, the uh, 1006 skill in our program. So, uh, we can look at the program descriptions, uh, specific program descriptions, but we also we can also add uh, the 1006 skill. And I'll tell you how we did that with the specialized education program. So, um, so this touches on uh, activities for upgrading and. Uh, upgrading and success oriented activities. So um, basically uh, there are, are performance criteria that are uh... Okay, so the skill is described as, as follows uh, using uh, learning str strategies and there are different performance criteria um, linked to this uh, skill as described. So when I was in the psychology department, I'd already gotten to know this element of skill. And I thought that there was several things there that could really meet the needs of our students. So um, distinguishing between uh, different factors that are linked to uh, school success or success in your education, um, documenting a topic, uh, writing 
uh, a text, uh, managing your studies, and then elaborating a strategy to improve your work methodologies. So all of this really um, evolved. We look at these elements and we ask ourselves where we could where we could really provide um, the learning opportunities for our students regarding all of these skills. Uh, now, we adapted this to our program. It can be added to any program. It can become a, a, a course in itself or be integrated to other course or to another course. Um, it can't be, so this, this competency, this skill, it cannot be assessed summatively. Uh, it can't be the object or subject to an assessment, a formal uh, assessment, but you can integrate it in the other um, assignments. Uh, that students need to complete. Uh, so we started this fall. And Nancy, if you could just allow me, this is an activity that is financed by Quebec, but that is not credited, right? Okay, so it is not, it will not provide cumulative credits for student status. Um, so we decided to integrate this skill um, in two blocks of 15 hours, so we put 15 hours in the um, professional communication course in the first semester, and then in the second semester, another sem semester, we have uh, um, professional assistance in Audible for the Student um, course that we integrated another uh, five-hour block to. Uh, so. So it forms part of a sort of package deal. And what we identified as a need is that as students came in, it was very, very different. There were some students who were quite ready to study at the college level, but some of them were very, weren't ready at all. And they, they, they really struggled to get, you know, the, the basics of how to manage your stress, how to write a report, how, how to write any academic text, and even just, you know, note taking. These are all important abilities, important skills. And we saw that some students were really ahead uh, with regards to that, but some, uh, some struggled and needed an extra hand. So with specialized education students, um, some of them need to, uh, a, a, a lot of them um, have a diagnosis, and we know that some would need more than others. And so um, we surveyed our former students, and a lot of them said that they would have needed more help to become uh, more efficient in their student profession. I'm sorry, uh, Nancy, for the class, right? And Nancy Fortin is asking in the chat, is that 30 hours extra, like on top of the um, training time that is prescribed by the ministry? Yes, we can go up to 45 hours and we can spread that. Um, we, we included that in two different courses or three, and we could also just literally create a class that would be just on um, intellectual work methodology. That's it. So does that answer the question? Well, I see that uh, Marie answered, uh, thank you. So I'm guessing that this made sense to her. Perfect. So for, for us, I would say that it really, uh, you know, it really struck us as a good idea because we're asking ourselves, you know, how are we going to provide the right tools to them? And we're trying to include them a bit everywhere. And then our um, pedagogy advisor told us, you know, you do have this skill that is available and that you're allowed to go get that integrated into your program. And for us, it was like, okay, wow, that that's awesome. So, um, is it does it apply for continued continued education? I wouldn't be able to answer you there. I would need to go get the um, information. But in Rimouski, there are a few programs that did follow suit. Uh, we have social work where this is uh, being implemented, and uh, it was 
for us a great opportunity. We decided to take 30 hours because we already have many hours of study in our program. We didn't want to overload our students, but it could go up to 45 hours if uh, another program wanted to do that. Uh, yes, it is applicable to continued education. Someone answered the question in the chat. Great. All right. I'm sorry about that. Sorry about the inter interruption. No problem. That's perfect. So an example here, I teach uh, professional communication. Uh, that's a one of the courses that I teach. Uh, so as a team, we decided what content, content would be seen in the first class and then in the second one, uh, in the first course. And then um, so for that first class, uh, it has to do with the... Uh, Uh, I uh, touch on, I cover motivation and success, uh, being a student, listening in class, note-taking, efficient reading, teamwork, oral and digital communication, and presentation standards. So that's, that um, uh, is seen in the first semester, and it is, it's become part of the professional and communication, professional communication and specialized education. And then in the second semester, we have this other course where we integrate the second block, and um, uh, it is a safe intervention work practices, and we uh, cover time management and stress management. In that second course, we were already touching on stress management, so so we thought that it was quite natural to include the second 15-hour block there to that course. So that's coming in the next semester. You're going to start for the first time. You're going to give that second block in the winter semester. Yes, indeed, that is what I'm happen. So, uh, and I integrated this material um, as a methodology snippets, I call them. Uh, so, when uh, it's possible to integrate the content to whatever the topic of a certain class is, and I do it when it's not possible, I kind of have a, a, a little video um, snippet that's apart from uh, the course content um, and uh, we are gathering material for this to become kind of like a reference a document that can be uh, useful for students throughout their studies and uh, so so we have actually gathered all this material and it's become a, a reference uh, document for all of our students they're all going to need to purchase it and uh, they're going to use it throughout their studies um, so we told our students that we were going to use uh, Mr. Dion's guide. Oh, okay, so, I'm sorry. So um, Mr. Dion's uh, book has become the reference material um, for these uh, for this process, and also the handbook that I'm using in communication is uh, the. Is the one that Ka Catherine worked on, and this is this is all included in the disciplinary content every week. So, can you speak about your methodology snippets? Um, well, I um, titled them like this because I wanted students to understand that this is content that I was giving to them, so that uh, to give them tools. So, if I speak about uh, listening right listening to people act actively listening in their communication as uh, skills well when we get to the methodology snippet that i'm going to speak about uh listening in class how do you prepare before a class in order um to um to learn optimally so i wanted to I wanted to include a little segment in class where it would be really clear that we're learning skills, these intellectual methodology um, skills. And it's, it's, it's natural for us to make links to with, with the content that we're seeing in class. The students know that they're not being assessed on that. They're not gonna be evaluated with regards to this content, but they do see that it's relevant and they appreciate it. So, so they think that it's relevant. Well, I think that they do. We would need to ask them. At the end of the semester, it would be a good moment to do so. And I was telling myself also, you know, it's good to give them tools as students, but it goes further than 
you know, these are tools that they can use for their whole life and uh, throughout their career. So every time I try to um, make sense of it this way, right, I'm telling them you're learning it as a student right now, but you're going to be able to use it later as well. You know, note taking is not a very glamorous topic for them, but um, I'm telling them it's not just to take notes during your college classes. You're going to be taking notes throughout your professional life, throughout your career. You're going to do a lot of observation. You're going to need to keep records, update your records. You're always going to need to be note taking. So in this um, mind frame, I tell them. Uh, that it is an investment. You know, if they learn to take uh, efficient notes, then it's always going to serve them very well. And I always try to include a section in my methodology snippets that is more professional, that is more linked to their field of profession, right? Um, and they really respond well. For example, when I talk about note taking, I say, okay, this is how you do um, good note taking, but then I'll make them practice note taking for example viewing a video of a stu a, a child and where they need to do some observation about the child and the way that they're manipulating certain objects etc cetera, etc cetera. and they needed to take note objective notes of what they were seeing the child do and then professionally it made sense to them because it looked like what they were going to do in their profession after their studies. So um, we present the importance of uh, citing well as well, but uh, we do put them in a situation in where they have to quote sources properly in their profession. They really take it at heart, right? I tell them that this has to do with being professional. Uh, you know, it's a professional practice proper professional practice to tell to, to, to tell people where you're taking your information from and uh, quoting citing your sources properly and so every week they're seeing something different but uh, the more concrete the closer to them the better the results so what we're hoping for because right now we're we're implementing it right now and um, but you know the point is to give them tools uh, from the first semester to give them, you know, efficient working tools, intellectual work methodologies for them to get have tools from the get go, not to ask themselves, waste time asking themselves, you know, how does it work? How should I do this? How should I go about this? What What is the teacher expecting from me? You know, and we want to be consistent, coherent, and we want to integrate uh, the disciplines that uh, covered by our program. So would you say that people are realizing in do you think that that is this going to be updated every semester as the program continues well we're this is a big question right now we're asking ourselves how this is going to um continue but i think that there is a will um, to work together to uh, reach a good comprehension and how all of it will articulate, I don't have the exact answer yet. So should I conclude now? Yeah, for sure. So conclusion, it is always interesting to see how people want to integrate their um, working methodology to their different programs. I think that it's quite unique the way that we all design our programs, right? So for us, collaborating between different actors is very important, seeing that, um, you know, we, we can't dissociate all of these elements. We need to be consistent, coherent within the program. And uh, the more coherent, the easier it's gonna, going to be for students to make sense of it. Uh, it contributes to student success in a major way, and it will impact how students will evolve. It will determine um, also for students who want to carry on um, with their studies or in the professional field afterward, it will contribute to their success. And uh, we uh, really have in mind that the tools that we're presenting, that we're inculcating, will be used by students throughout their program of study. So is there anything that you wanted to add, Catherine? Well, uh, perhaps uh, quickly, uh, working methodology we know is not something that gets our students too excited. We all know about it, but the way that we integrate it to our programs, be it through uh, ministry lists or through the um, 1006 uh, 
skill, uh, there's always a good way, a creative way to do it. You integrate it to your classes, and when your uh, students graduate, you know that they have good skills, good competencies, and uh, be able to carry on with their studies, continue their studies, or go into the work market. And um, so these are going to be achievements that will be very uh, important, uh, key um, factors for their success after college as well. Yes, regarding teamwork, you were saying earlier as well that note taking, you know, note taking, and um, we're always going to use it in our professional context, but a teamwork as well, you know, that's something that's just exploding and it really uh, deserves more attention, you know, teaching students how to work as a team um, is key as well. So there are other questions that are asked here. Can you, do you allow me to ask you these questions? And I'm sorry, I wasn't able to be there at the start of the presentation. Congratulations. Uh, Michel Montville says, I received a copy of L'Essentiel second edition, but my code only gives me student access. So how can I activate uh, the activities and resources for teachers? Oh, perhaps Chenelière, so the, the, the editor uh, could answer your questions uh, more precisely. They could answer by chat. Oh, I can, yeah, you just need to get in contact with the editor, La Chanelière, they have a representative. So each of the programs has a, a dedicated representative. They'll send you a paper copy um, for evaluations with the assessments. And also they'll be able to provide uh, the um, teacher code to access material. Um, and you'll see if it's something that might meet your needs. And uh, we'll get back to the content of the presentation per se. People are asking a lot of hours regarding 1006, um, the 1006 skills. So Sophie Crevier was asking, could you um, go over that? Um, why it's, it's prohibited? You cannot associate uh, the 1006 skill to a summative uh, evaluation or summary evaluation. I don't know exactly where that is stated, but we were uh, told, we were asked that there would be no um, summary assessment uh, of this skill. So we don't have any grade that is associated with this uh, competency. Um, it's just that if the, the student, if the student attends, the training, he has succeeded, he has completed it. Uh, there is no summative assessment, there is no associated grade. But Catherine might know more about it than me. Actually, uh, the uh, document um, is not very known in the network. There are some upgrade... Uh, elements, uh, the upgrade classes that uh, are inaudible for the interpreter. You have hyperlink to access upgrading activities, uh, so you can go and consult them. But according to my comprehension, there are no units that are associated to uh, 1006. Because there are no units, we can't assess because it doesn't contribute to the number of units of credits required uh, for the obtention of the diploma. So um, it remains uh, formative. Um, but uh, regarding the Tremplin DEC programs, for students who are part of those programs, it is really 1006 that's associated with those programs. I don't know. Are there any units in those programs associated with that skill as well? I don't know. We would need to look into that to see if there's a possibility of uh, associating summative assessments there. Um, I did teach at the Tremplin deck at some point, and it was exactly the 1006 skill. And then we did need to submit some grades, grades but that's because it touched um, or it affected some units in their program, specific units in their program. So I, I, I think that it is different, might be different, but uh, we would need to look into the specifics. Marie Fortin now is asking two questions. So. I think that you answered them actually. Does a student have a grade for their 30 hours? And does it appear in their report card? No, it's on their schedule, but there is no grade that's associated with it. 
Mireille Ménard, you answered that, I think. So uh, for Tremplin Deck, uh, the skill can be evaluated. Can it not? Why can it not be evaluated when it is introduced in the program? So we just uh, answered that part, but is the was the answer sufficient? Yes, I think so, because Marie Fortin says yes. Uh, Absolutely. We could ask Mireille if she got the answer to her question um, because she was the one asking it. So why is it not evaluated? Why is it not assessed when it's part of a program? Could we say, in any case, that a learning can be uh, assessed formatively? Especially if it's integrated into a more general, more global course, it can be subject to an assessment, but there can be um, assessments of the skill in an official document that would describe the student's program of study, but, but nothing prevents you from performing a formative assessment of this skill. Yes, in the chat, Mireille says that in Tremplin Deck, there is no unit, no credit, but it is assessed formatively. Are there any other questions? Are there, is there anyone that would want more, more details? Uh, I found this very interesting as a presentation. I see that both of you, you intensively use Bernard's book. I think that some participants also use it. Uh, we would need to look into it, but uh, Mrs. Fortin was saying here that it was very instructive. I will look here if there's any more questions. No, so there. Thank you. Everyone, all the presentations will get a copy of the presentation. You'll get the content of the chat and you'll get the link um, to access the recording. It should be available soon. And uh, hello, Bernard. I wasn't able to greet you, but we've known each other for quite a while. Thank you, Catherine. Caroline and Nancy, um, I was uh, I taught psychology at the college level as well. So congratulations for what you did. And um, so I say, see you next time. I'll send you a link to the survey um, where you can tell us, uh, give us feedback regarding the webinar. Thank you very much for participating.